Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we'll be talking about how we can make use of the GPT OSS model, which is the powerful model which can run within our local machine using Olama. We can use the same GPT OSS model, like 20 billion parameter within my Mac operating system to use the power of its with the Codex, which is a tool introduced by the GPT team or the OpenAI team uh, to perform the coding operation an answer to the cloud code. So if you really worked with the cloud code before, like how I have shown even before in my other videos, like how you can uh, ask the question to build the uh, application or do the application testings and all of these amazing operation. I think this is one of the most powerful uh, tool that is available on the market today. But now in order to answer this cloud code's power, uh, the OpenAI team or Google's Gemini team, they are building their own uh, like a replica of the cloud code. But we are gonna see how we can use this codex to use not the uh, the cloud model but the local large language model which is powered with the GPT OSS model and I'm going to show you how we can actually achieve that in this particular video. So in order to do that you just need to have the GPT OSS model downloaded within your machine and that you can do using the Olama obviously. So just go to the uh, olama.com over here. If you really not watched my other video about how you can work with the, the GPT OSS model I highly recommend you to go and watch that. If not in this video I'll quickly show you how we can actually do that as well. So just go ahead and download the uh, Olama over here and uh, now if you just go to the models you can see that this the GPT OSS model is the new model which has got two million pulls now uh, it's also a thinking model also does this tooling supports as well so you can go and choose this particular model and uh, in my machine at least I can run the GPT OSS 20 billion parameters so I'm gonna go and copy this particular model and then I can just run it from there and I have already downloaded that and that's the reason why I have got this particular model um, that I can even query see what is the GDP of New Zealand and then it's gonna go and pull it for 2023 uh, time frame and if I'm gonna ask for 2024 and 2025 then it's gonna go and bring the real-time information as well the reason why this is happening is because now the GPT OSS also supports the tooling and also supports the search tool by default. So if you're just going to go and toggle on the web search, it's going to go and search pretty much like the GPT, which does the real time search online in the internet. It also does it for you over there and it's going to get you the response as you can see, which is quite amazing. So you can get those informations as well. But now what we're going to do is with this whole power of the GPT OSS, I'm going to use the codex to write a code like how we can do with the cloud code. We'll see how that really works. And I have seen it working quite decently. And I want to show you how that actually works as an experiment. In order to do that, I'm gonna go and create a directory called as GPT OSS test. And then I'm going to go to the GPT uh, OSS test and I'm going to clear this window and I'm gonna use the codex. So make sure you have the codex already installed. In order to install the codex, all you have to do it is just go and search for codex. Oh yeah, look at that, this is the command. npm i hyphen g uh, open AI codex. You can also install it with the brew on the global scope as well. Um, and you can also download it if you wanted to. So I'm gonna do it from this way over here and I have already did that. That's the reason why uh, I can just See, if I just do that over here, I have already installed it in my global uh, package space, so it's not gonna again download it. And now you can just do a codex and hit the enter. You can be asked this question over here saying, sign in with the chat GPT to use the codex as a part of your paid plan or connect an API key for the usage based, uh, based billing. So you need to have um, a plan like, pro or plus or team plan, or you can use your own API, which is gonna burn your money in a minute. So you're gonna use with the first option at least most of the time. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna go with any of these plan, rather I want to use my local large language model, which is my uh, local uh, GPT OSS 20 billion parameter, this model, this exact model. So in order to achieve that, what I'm gonna do is, there is a command over here, I'm oh, sorry, just gonna control C, uh, it's called as codex uh, hyphen p OSS. So this is a property that you need to set for the codex. And if you try to run this guy over here, 
you see that now it's going to say that you are running the codex in the uh, user uh, this particular folder uh, do you want to allow this folder without asking any approval and if you say yes so which means it's not going to ask for any further approval while it's going to modify anything on this particular folder or else you're just going to require approval for the edit and con commands so how did i even achieve this particular operation well there is one thing that we need to set on the uh, on this particular place, which I want to quickly show you. I'm going to open a new folder over here. And I'm going to go to uh, cd dot codex, something like that. And I'm going to open a Visual Studio code. And I'm just going to uh, open this guy a bit. And you can see that I've created something called as config.toml file. So this is a configuration file that I have actually created over here. So this is the folder which is going to be automatically generated every time you're going to install the codex and start using it for the first time. Uh, but you won't have this config.toml file. So this is something that we need to actually go ahead and create. Now, if I'm going to do a control Z over here, you see that this is what's going to come up. So this is something that I have actually uh, saved uh, even before I started using the GPT uh, model as the codex hyphen p os is that thingy so this config is required basically this config says that you're going to be using the model provider as local and the base url is going to be the the olamas uh, port over here just this 11434 slash v1 this is something which is required you need to definitely give this as a base url and, and then you need to give a profile.oss which is going to be the gpt oss uh, 20 billion parameter and the model provider is local so this is something that we need to give this is the important bit of piece that we need to give in order to use the local large language model for the codex uh, uh, unlike the the cloud version of it so once i save this thing over here which means now it is enabled to use this particular um, model in the uh, in the local machine and now if i'm just going to do the codex hyphen p of oss you see that now this is the same thing is going to come up i'm going to hit allow and now it's ready for us to rock and roll see this now that we have set up all of these things, I'm going to write a quick test and I'll show you how it actually works. So I'm going to say uh, init, and this is pretty much like the agents mod uh, in uh, Cloud Code where you can create an agent.md file or maybe different types of agents, which we have already discussed in our Exit Automation YouTube channel. If you have really not watched it, I highly recommend you to go ahead and watch it there as well. We created an agent for Playwright, uh, a UI UX, and also for the UI architect, something like that. We created all these agents, the same exact thing is going to come up over here as well so all you have to do it in here is that you're going to create an init and i'm going to say uh, playwright uh, test architect just going to say like that uh, you are good in writing uh, playwright in c sharp dot net uh, tests uh, and you know how to uh, create frameworks uh, and write reusable tests, something like that. So if I'm going to give all of this information over here, and now pretty much the GPT uh, is going to go and formulate uh, the uh, text which you have given, and then it is going to go and generate uh, a uh, an agent.md file for you over there. So I'm just going to wait for that to happen. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do it is I'm going to go and open the particular folder that I was just created over here. So I'm going to go try out and then the gpt um, oss test and then i'm gonna open visual studio code over here so that you can see what's really happening behind the scene as well let me close this window there we go you can see that now this has been created for us over here these are all just created from that command that i just gave right so if i'm just going to go to the agent.md file you see that now this guy has created a repository guideline it has also given some information and there is this the testing guideline it has uh, written for us over here uh, and things are just added so we will just go with whatever it has created so far and then we'll start exploring from there on uh all right so now that this is the thing that it has created i'm gonna say uh, can you write a uh, playwright with uh, c-sharp.net code for the application ea app maybe I'm just gonna http colon ea app dot sami dot com and uh, write tests for login uh, employee create uh, from employee list page uh, with create button so that's how we create the employee and then uh, edit employee 
uh, and view employee write it as a framework structure see i'm gonna basically say a lot of things over here and all of these are actually running within my local large language model so i'm not even really using any of the um, model which is running on the cloud or something like that it's all running within my local machine and the good thing i have seen actually during this particular trial uh, and run is that it's not really cranking my fan as well it's just doing so many things uh, with very less power, to be honest. And now it's just doing everything so faster as well. You just saw that, right? Like, see, it has found that this is the page that it has to initialize. So it is written like a framework structure here, then I async lifetime there, uh, and also creating uh, the playwright initialization and the uh, and the playwright uh, object disposition, uh, dispose operation over here. And then it's also creating the test data.cs file where it's creating all the different test data that is required. And you'll also notice that there is this folder created for me over here. See that? This is exactly what is being created, uh, which is amazing. And we also have got the uh, test data.cs file, which is this one. Looks like it's not really doing anything. So I'm going to say continue uh, adding the tests i think it has lost the context or something like that it just got mute uh let's wait for this to happen oh yeah now it's doing it i know it's not that great experience to be honest if i would have asked the same exact question uh, question with the uh cloud code uh, by this time or maybe codex with uh, the power of the real model running on the cloud it would have been even more better would have been way faster but the one thing which i see is like this is not that great but at least it is working see the codex is working pretty much like how you can use client with the local large language model the same exact thing is happening over here as well and at least it has added some test for me as you can see over here look at that so that has come through and if i'm gonna say uh, can you also update the tests with the POM coding style maybe pattern or whatever it's going to go and edit that particular file and it's going to update it as well so it is working i mean it is not 100 percent is amazing or something like that but it's actually working in a, in a bit so this is how actually the uh, the the codex works with the local large language model and the one more thing that i wanted to show you uh, with the codex is really is that the power of the model context protocol support and also using the local large language model. Even this was not amazingly working as well. Like it's not working like 100% to be honest, but it is working a bit. I'll quickly show you what I really mean about that. So if I'm going to go to the uh, GPT, no, not the GPT, but the codex for that matter. I'm going to say codex uh, git, something like that, uh, which is going to be this one. If I'm going to go there. And if I'm going to see, they have got the, the Cortex uh, CLI also has a support for the model context protocol, which is this one. So if I'm going to go and click this particular model context protocol server, you will see that all you have to do in order to use the model context protocol is uh, just use this particular server, as you can see over here, like MCP server dot server name, and then the command, uh, and then the arguments, and uh, even environment if it is required. So I'm going to go copy this whole thing over here. And I'm going to use the uh, GitHub's Exit Automation Playwright repository and uh, Playwright MCP server, and we'll see how that really works. So in order to do that, I'm going to go here. And in this particular place, I'm just going to add this. And I'm going to give the server name as Playwright. Uh, and it's going to be the same thing. And the, the server name is going to be the uh, let's say git slash exit automation uh, and it is going to be the mcp uh, playwright which is this one so if we go to this particular github repository you will see that we have got the playwright mcp server as well so all you have to do in order to use this one is just use this particular command right so i'm just going to go copy this whole thing and paste it over here uh, save it so this is going to configure a playwright mcp server for me and even this tool can also be used during the development purpose. So you can just go here. Uh, I think it's keep writing something there. So I'm just going to ignore it for now. And if I'm going to say uh, MCP, if I'm going to hit enter, see there is no MCP tool at the moment because I just uh, saved it. I need to restart the, the codex. So if I'm going to say codex one more time over here, and if I'm going to say MCP, you see that now we have got the 
Playwright MCP server and it's going to show all the tools which the particular Playwright MCP server supports. So now I can use this potential to also generate the code or maybe execute the, the test or something like that. I can do all of these things from here as well. So this is so seamless and so amazing. So this is the power of using the codex uh, along with the local large language model using the power of the GPT OSS 20 billion parameter. But again, if you have a good GPU and if you can run the 200 billion parameters and also you have good RAM to support all of these operations, maybe you can also try running that and let me know how it goes. That's all I can do, at least in my machine. But hey, that's all about this uh, GPT OSS running through our local machine. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know how it goes for your system configuration and if it works or not works, let me know your thoughts on the comments below. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.